Eldar moved out of step as they flashed towards the large gated walls of the city. There, around the outskirts of the lands various, trees stretched up to the sky for what seemed like an endless distance. The emergence of Anandel and Arius' inhabitants halted Darius, Darius and his army infantry, bringing their impending arrival to a complete stop. From their elevated positions, the Denatrian arcane warriors waited for order for the emperor, who stood silently glancing upon Anandel and his forces. The man with gleaming eyes focused further as he scoped out the scarce amount of soldiers that the general, as Darius assumed he was, had brought to the table. Little did he know that, despite this, their seemingly minuscule numbers, the elves had more than enough talent to obliterate the mages that Darius had brought along with him. Muttering something to a mage nearby, Darius pointed carefully downward towards Arius. Anandel laughed loudly across the field as he drew symbols in the air out of ancient arcane energies. The symbols conglomerated quickly into a sword, formed translucently out of glowing willpower. A voice boomed loudly, echoing throughout the minds of all the Eerians. It was Elamir's voice, as he spoke orders into the masses, into the masses who were prepared to defend their nation. Anandel, the northeast eastern fifth is going to handle the front defenses. You and the eastern fifth are going to cut down Darius's western front and flank from behind. If all goes well, you will send in the northern and western fifths to encircle Darius and his and his forces. We should be able to take care of this fight in no time, if that's all that you've brought. There was skepticism in Eleanor's voice, as he questioned whether or not Darius came prepared. However, he continued to spout orders into the masses of elves from the confines of the library. The crystal of willpower was truly a gift to Arius, for it allowed Elamir to coordinate all of the elvish military forces from afar, his mind linked to the other two magistrates. Along the architecturally adorned walls, Tade and the nature elves waited from their exalted trees. She nodded silently, listening to every word of what Elamir said. She knew exactly what her role was. <laughs> and the rest of the druidically talented nature elves were prepared to fight to the death against the emperor's forces. Kill them. Darius shouted out to the mages, and instantly, they began to move downwards with a rushing dash, like horses they strode. The humans appeared to be determined to end the chronicle of the Eerian elves. Through all the masses of mages as they ran downwards, Darius and Seika walked slowly and silently towards the capital. A grin the size of the Denatrian Empire crossed Darius's face as the chaos burst <laughs> Bursts of flame and lightning buffeted the walls of Arius, as the gnarled roots of the oldest trees of Denatria shook the earth. Smashing the mages away from the silent army of Arius, all of the elves watched as the mages wreathed their city walls in flares of destructive Anandel smiled and pointed forth, and the magical army was the, the magically the magical army was untrained and terribly untactful. He immediately realized what Darius meant by his gesture. Elamir, Anandel shouted out into the air with the sound of realization in his voice. I know. Elamir chuckled in Anandel's head. It's obvious he either didn't know what he was doing when he came here with his army. However, it appears as though he may have brought something far more powerful than this pitiful array of mages. Moments passed by, and Ta Day and her sorcerers all looked downwards through a green glowing light. In that very moment, every mage in Darius's army stared up and knew that the promises about returning to Denatria as heroes were false. The gargantuan trees ripped the ground apart below him, tearing the betrayed mages asunder. After the earth and tempest subsided, all that remained after the destructive battle was Darius and Seika. Standing next to each other in a sanctuary of glowing light, Darius continued to smile, and Seika waited beside him with the same dignity that she had always had. Fiercely, Anandel pointed outwards to Seika and Darius, screaming something into his army in a malicious sounding elvish phrase. Elamir, standing with his hand extended on the willpower crystal, gasped for laugh. Tade screamed out from underneath the boughs of a massive of willow, and Darius snapped his finger lightly. Behind the great king, a mysterious thing suddenly occurred. The beautiful green hills, which he had before been simply empty and silent, were now infested with thousands of soldiers bearing the mark of the Denatrian Empire. Trebuchets, ballista, and all sorts of heavy infantry remained prepared to fire on the capital, and in this very instant, everything glowed in a destructive shade of red and yellow, as the fires of war truly unleashed themselves. Anandel quickly <laughs> swiveled his arm in the air as he muttered a prayer to himself that was truly genuine. The elves had underestimated what Darius had brought, and Anandel believed that they were going to pay for it. Elamir quickly barked more orders into the crystal as the helpless people inside the city listened to the psychic frequency in the air. Moments
moments later, thousands of civilians burst out of their homes, dashing toward the one of the largest ports in all of Russia. Anandel, I am ordering a full evacuation onto the ships of the port. It didn't take much calculation for me to find out that we're not going to win this one. The artillery he has brought is going to rip through our defenses like a pitchfork. Anandel screamed aloud in rage as he sliced through one of the remaining mages on the field of war. Darius had begun to send the second onslaught, ordering the infantry of this restored front to begin attack. Rushing forward, the ironclad warriors cut into Anandel's battle units as massive purple glow began to surround the whole of the city itself. Elamir had pondered a massive field of energy in order to ensure that the safe evacuation of the citizens of Ares. Fire volleys one. Darius spoke clearly with a flat tone in his voice. His command echoed out into the fields as all the trebuchets fired massive balls of flaming earth towards the earth, towards the city. Heavy ballista and other massive projectiles fired, crashing into the walls and the ground surrounding the nipple. <laughs> On the other side of the walls, the women and the children of Arius quickly dashed towards the massive docks at the end of the city. Elamir had instructed them well, and he had also made it a priority to specifically leave behind a group of captains in the event that the others would not be able to make it away. As the most skilled tacticians of Arius battled for their lives against Darius' talented armies, the Mejalindar, or the Blade Singers, forced the human cavalier soldiers back like a tidal wave. The force of the Mejalindar, however, was not enough to thwart the distraught emperor, who tore straight through the center of Anandal's concentrated forces. Aiming forward, cutting through the center of the battle like a knife, Darius charged directly towards Anandal who returned the same gesture. In barely a few seconds, Anandel and Darius clashed blades in between a massive conflict whose bloodshed was unseen by Kavadria until this point. Darius slashed his sword along the ground and summoned a circle of flames around the two, forcing all the conflict outside of a very small amount of space. Anandel, are you sure you are able to handle fighting him? Something's bothering me. There's something I can't see. Anandel listened to Elamir's voice, looking at about Darius who returned his typical smug glance back at him. Their blades clashed multiple times, forcing the prowess owned by either away from the other. Stepping backwards, Darius laughed as he drew a massive blade from his back. The blade, which appeared singed on its surface, <laughs> ripped out a massive leather carrying case fiercely. Anandel gasped, and recognizing the force of the sword immediately, it's... And the chronicle ends there.